Next on our agenda is the iHome clock radio dock. So let's take a look at where this one is held together and we'll start by taking those screws out. So it looks like we have four screws and one thing you always want to check is could there potentially be any other hidden fasteners and oh look at that in the battery compartment there's a fifth screw. So sometimes stuff like that as I've said in my other videos can be a source of rather colorful creative language when you cannot find those hidden fasteners. So let's These buried ones are a little more difficult sometimes. You have to make sure you get the right size screwdriver. Righty tighty lefty loosey. It hasn't moved. Okay. Well, let's see. You might be all the way out. So, what we can try is flip it. And it's out. Oh. So we know that's about that long. I think it's doing that one, right? Yep. Yeah. Um, number two. Okay. There it there is. There we go. All right. So let's see which way this is going to come apart. Oh, you know what? This is a disconnect, so let's get that out of the way. That's really good. <laughs> now, I suspect that this probably splits in half. So let's try to wiggle it like that. Oh. And let's take a look. We go nice and slow. Are there wires? Because remember, this is a teardown, so we don't really care as much. But if you're trying to repair something, you want to go nice and gentle. You don't want to break something that you won't be able to fix later. So if we take a look inside here, we have a circuit board down here. And that down there, that disc, that's what's called a piezo disc. So it's like a crystal. And that is usually used for kind of those high frequency sirens, like what you'd find in a smoke detector, or an alarm clock. Mm -hmm. That is the alarm. And the beep thing. Yes, the annoying beep thing. <laughs> so we have wires routing down here. We have our speaker. And now this actually has connectors on it. So go ahead and you can just unplug those what? connectors. Does that make it a little easier? I didn't get to cut it. I know you didn't get to cut it. Like this one? Alright, now that we have the top of the clock radio apart, we can see what's inside. So here's our speaker. These are the connections that went down to the base which was the backup batteries and the alarm. Some screws. Yep, we have some screws here that are holding the top half together. We have our switches for the various buttons. Time sync, daylight savings time, time zone. And we have a bunch of buttons on the top. Yep, we have buttons on the top, which is which we should be able to see once we take this out. Uh, I'm going to guess this guy is the audio amplifier, this chip right here, which is on the big heat sink. Uh, we have lots of filter capacitors here, which are usually found in power supplies and power amplifiers. Uh, we have a ribbon cable here, which is most likely for the display. Or that might actually that might be this guy right here. So this this might be for all the buttons. And this is probably for the display. So let's dig into those screws and see what we find next. Let's try seeing if this will come out. Feels like it's in there pretty well. Uh, there might be some other screws. See if you see any other screws. Possibly. Let's see. Yeah. Is there a screw down there? Yes. Right over here. Yep. 
which means there might be a matching one on this side. Let's try on that side. Put this one right there. So here you're. Notice how you're kind of bending this. Yeah. So let's pop this out. Which is just a. These are uh, kind of like a friction connector. So that should now. Wow. Where are you doing? <laughs> yeah, if you want to do this as a repair job, you don't want to bend the connector all the way around like that. But since this is a teardown, that's okay. I'm sorry. That's okay. So this is a learning experience. So go ahead and dig in there and get that last screw out. Yeah, you can see this is getting very loose now. Now that all the screws are out, let's see if this will come out. So go ahead and try to lift it out. Okay, nice and easy. And let's see. Kind of give it a feel, see if you can figure out what might be holding it. Four screws down there. I notice there are two screws up here, so it is possible that these are holding it. So. How many screws did you do? Six? Six. There's three. Let's see. Alright, so that one still looks like it's in there, so maybe give that a couple more turns. Okay. Check it out. Try giving that one a couple more turns. Oh, there's Seems another one right there, and another one right there. Those probably hold the circuit board. There we go. That looks like it's a little looser now. There we go. Alright, so now look, when you loosen this, oh, there's more. looks like oh, there's a connector under there. Do you need some for that? No, nope, I think we can probably just unplug this. You are scissor crazy. I'm sorry. There we go. Oh. So there's actually two connectors. So this... Whoa, it's like padding. Yep, little padding for the buttons. And this is the actual dock. This is a tie this. on this. So yeah. that's their special apple socket. And then it converts it over to kind of more of a standard connector. So we'll take that apart in a second. So let's see what we have here for the guts. So there are four screws that are on this side that need to be done. Oh, there's another four up here. So that's eight. And then there's another four down here. So that's 12. Okay. 16. Oh, wait for the circuit. So that's a little too small. Let's I think that's grab. That's too big. Oh. Try one of these. Over here. Yep. Yeah. Take our jeweler screwdrivers. To see if that'll fit in there. So that. Let's see if that one comes off. Oops. Looks like you have a couple of connectors. Wires. Yep. That's glued down. What's it attached to? This board? Yeah. So why don't you take these screws out and let's take that board off. There we go. Okay. Uh, oh, this one. has a... Uh, Zip tie. Yeah. Uh, oh, you know what this is? This is what's called a ferrite bead. So what this is for is to minimize. Remember we were talking about FCC and interference? This is to lower the amount of interference that the device can produce coming out on that screen. Here, watch. I'm trying to repair it, don't rip it. Yep. So here, see this here? This unclamps. Hold on, hold on. Pop that open. This should open now. See that? This is a special material called ferrite material. It uh, contains iron. And what this will do is it will help to filter any high frequency noises, that high frequency noise that might come out on that cable. Remember, these cables can act like an antenna and broadcast the noise. And you don't want that because that can cause interference to other devices that are nearby. So what do we have on here? 
bunch of wires and yes. the screen. <laughs> we have a bunch of wires, yep. We have the screen, we have some capacitors, we have a couple of switches. And more screws. And we also have a small processor over here. So this is probably the processor that controls the display. And, and it talks to the other processor through this cable. Attached by these things. Oh, it's attached by the. Uh, those are actually soldered down, so those oh. aren't going anywhere. But it looks like it's just glued. Oh. So I think if we just pry up on this, let's get the screwdriver here from underneath. There we go. Give it a little twist. Go right in the edge. We want to break that glue free. Whoa. And careful because this does this is made of glass, so we want to be careful. Plastic. So what's interesting now, this is a liquid crystal display. This is glass. So that Whoa. is the backing. And you have this crystal material or this material. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm sorry. So you have this material here, and you have the white background. This forms a reflective background. And then this, if you can see that in the camera, is translucent. So what happens is when this is given electrical energy, this will change from translucent to opaque. So that you won't be able to see through it. Oh. And there, let's see. So that will allow you to create characters, like numbers, oh, is that on this. Have these little bumps? Mm -hmm. And these are very low energy. They don't take a lot of power to run. And it looks like there are two LEDs here. They light up the background, so that way you can see the display in the dark. So that's the display circuit. All right, this was the uh, this was the top. These were all the buttons. These are all the things that weren't working anymore. So we're not sure exactly what got fried on this. Most likely something down here got fried. So we can start by taking off. You want to take that board off? Or you want to take, yeah, there we go. So one thing you want to do is try and keep the screwdriver straight to the head and give it a little bit of pressure so that way it'll, it won't pop out. Because what happens is um, it will grind up against the head of the screw, and that's what's called rounding the screw, or stripping the screw. It changes it? Uh, it strips out the plus sign on the Phillips head, so that way you can't turn the screw anymore. Oh, that's not good. It is not good. Especially if you're trying to repair something. Correct. Like in this case, it doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. Oh, one more in the middle. <gasps> Looks like that freed up that board. And you can see here that this is actually mounted on, they had the holes in the board, about the same size as these, and that way it fits on there nice and tight. Right, so next we have the back panel here. Looks like we have a couple of screws. So it looks like that might be a good candidate for the jeweler screwdriver. So here's more of our little push buttons, and we have a little slide switch here. Oh, we don't push anymore. No, because that's where the buttons are right here. Oh. These are the push buttons. See, these these aren't really that nice to look at, so they give it a nice fancy exterior that matches the styling of the device that they're trying to use. This actually had a ring that held the speaker in place. And then we also, looks like we have a connector here. So why don't you go ahead and unplug that. Oh. Just pull it. And then it's glued to the top of this capacitor. And now this whole speaker should 
probably just pop out. Just be careful, we don't want to get any cuts. Sometimes these things, when they go, they slip suddenly. And that's usually when uh, fingers get skinned against the uh, various surfaces. And then this no longer becomes a kid-friendly video. Yep, so that there is our loudspeaker, which is now dented. I'm sorry. <laughs> now, of course, if this were a repair job, we would be being very careful, careful. about working with the circuit board. Um, these circuits can be damaged easily by static electricity. Yeah. And so you need to... Yeah, eh, don't worry about it. It'll come out when we take the board out. Or, you can use the Ooh, wire. Yes. And just go in there and pull it out very carefully. Oh, there's the other screw. Yep. So it looks like they had a relatively complex uh, plastic piece here that tied everything together. And what do we have on the circuit board? Yeah, this one. This thing. All right, so let's take a look. So this is actually a pretty thin circuit board. Normally circuit boards, most circuit boards tend to be about 63 thousandths of an inch thick. This looks like it's about half of that. A little bit cheaper that way. Um, all the components are only on one side of the board, which makes assembly a little bit cheaper. So these buttons were tied in here, and this circuit board connected to the dock, and when the person who was using this zapped this connector, I'm going to guess the energy from that static went down the connector, down the cable, into this board, damaged one of the chips on here that controls the buttons, and that's what led to this no longer functioning. So, a little lesson learned. There's not a lot of... Um, you know, there's some components on there. Some of these devices could be uh, protection devices, but most likely not. So, you know, in the end, um, you know, a few pennies worth of protection components may have saved this from an early death, but... Sometimes products are made uh, with price in mind and not necessarily robustness. Thank you for watching the video on how to do the teardown of these two clock radios. I hope you learned a lot about what goes on inside of them, as well as some of the techniques you can use to do a teardown, as well as a plan for doing a repair if you need to do that. I want to thank my assistant for helping me out in this process. I hope you learned a little bit more about doing teardowns as well. If you like what you see, please subscribe to my channel. It would be much appreciated, and I'll send you more videos like this in the future. Uh, also, if you would like to offer some comments as to how I can make my videos better, please leave some comments uh, below, and I welcome your ideas and suggestions on future projects I can do. This is Par64Guy. See you later.